This is another one of those stories that we all know, right? Because we've heard it over and over and over again. It's the first reading every Sunday in the season of Lent. Is the tempting or testing of Jesus, where Jesus is taken out into the wilderness by... Not the devil. Who takes Jesus into the wilderness? The Holy Spirit does. God takes Jesus to the wilderness. Did you realize that before? We actually pray that every week. We'll pray it here in a little bit when we do the Lord's Prayer, right? And lead me not into... Right? Does God lead people into temptation? It's a trick question. We're not going to answer that this morning. Um, So Jesus is taken into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. He's there for 40 days. He doesn't eat anything. How many of you have ever gone four hours without eating? Some of us in here have done the the 30-hour famine, which that's tough. I don't stop drinking coffee, by the way, during the 40-hour famine. It's still water, right? We're allowed to have water during the 30-hour famine. It's just running through beans. It's it's all good. So (laughs) it's a little bit darker than normal water, but it's still so. But we, you know, right? Jesus has said Jesus had nothing. Does that mean he didn't have any water? He didn't have anything. And then the devil comes, who is also known as... Satan, you know, the word Satan, S-T-N, with the vowel points in Hebrew means, um, and the word just flew out of my mind, um, adversary. Um, And adversaries in the Old Testament aren't really these mythical creatures or this mythical creature that comes from another time and realm. Adversaries in the Old Testament are more those who are sitting next to you. People who pose to be our friends, but lead us into places that we shouldn't be, right? Have you ever had a friend take you someplace that you probably shouldn't have? (laughs) Have you ever taken a friend someplace where they probably shouldn't have? We've already confessed, so it's all okay. But, right? So, this text is a text that we all know, and and we've heard it over and over again. And we know how it's supposed to happen, and what's supposed to happen next. But do you realize that this version of it is different than the version we heard last year. Last year was the Gospel of Matthew, and we heard this same story. Jesus was taken out into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit, and there the devil met him and tempted him. And he said, if you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. And he said, if you are the Son of God, turn around and worship me, and I will give you all of these kingdoms. And then he said, see, and I even got it wrong. That's Luke. Matthew is, turn these stones into bread. And then he took him to the pinnacle of the temple and said, jump, because the angels will protect you. And then he took him to the mountain and said, bow down and worship me, because I will give you all of this stuff. I will give you all of these kingdoms. And in Luke, it's bread, power, security. In Matthew, it's bread, security, power. Does it make a difference? Yes, because it's the emphasis that the writer wants to make. In the story, in what's happening. In Matthew, the emphasis of Matthew is meeting Jesus on the mountain in the Sermon on the Mount. That's why the mountain is the last one in Matthew. In Luke, it's more about security and understanding who we are in, in God. And the fact that Jesus was taken to the temple. That's what's coming up here. That's what came up just right before this. When Jesus was taken to the temple when he was 12 years old. That's where the temple is. And the pinnacle of the temple, we should all know, is the point in Jesus' history understanding at that time was the highest point on earth. It might not have actually been, and it probably wasn't actually the highest point on earth. But to, to the Jews, the pinnacle of the temple was the point where heaven and earth met. So therefore, it was the highest point that one could possibly obtain. So what is the story about then? We've heard it over and over again, and we've heard people talk about it over and over again. We've read it, and we understand that Jesus gets tempted, and every time he turns the devil away by doing what? Quoting scripture. And we learn that the devil is wily enough that he can also quote scripture, because here in the end he says to Jesus, throw yourself down from here, because it is written that they will bear you up, and that your foot won't even dash a stone, right? He quotes to him Psalm 91, which we will actually sing a little bit later in our closing hymn. The devil quoted scripture to Jesus. 
So do you think knowing Scripture is enough? How many of you actually could quote Scripture? Just don't raise your hands. It's okay. I don't think that that really matters because, and here's why. You just heard your pastor say, it doesn't matter if you can quote scripture. Yes, because if we're truly secure in who we are and who God has made us to be, then the Holy Spirit is actually going to be with us and give us the words that we need to say at the point at which we need to say them. Have you ever said something and you wondered after you said it, where in the world did that come from? If you haven't, don't worry, it'll happen. And if you and if you haven't, it probably happened and you and it just happened and it was just a miraculous thing. But the Holy Spirit gives us utterances when we can't possibly think of what to say. But here's the point to this whole passage of Scripture. It's really about power. You see, each and every one of us are tempted each and every day. We watch TV, we drive down the road, and we see advertisements for all these wonderful products that are going to change our lives and make everything beautiful and better, right? I got the, I got the magic drink to make you thinner. I've got the, the wonderful cell phone that's going to make your life perfect. I've got the computer that's going to end all of your problems, and I can give you TV that's going to make your teeth whiter, right? I can solve all of your problems if you only buy this one product. And how many times do you buy that product, and what happens? Nothing, or you have more problems, right? You buy the teeth whitening stuff, and it actually turns your teeth orange. I've never actually seen that happen. I just thought, you know, so if that happens, let me know. I'd like to use it as an actual sermon example sometime. So, but right, we're barraged by all of these things that are going to make our life better. We're tempted. And do these, do these ads actually have any power over us whatsoever? Can they make you go and buy that product? Can me taking someone who has a problem with alcohol to a bar make them drink? Now, is it wrong for me to take an alcoholic to a bar? Yes, it is. But by me taking them there, am I forcing them to drink? No. Maybe that's a bad analogy. Is it wrong for me to take someone who's overweight to Uncle Mike's? Is it, is it wrong for me to buy someone who, who has a problem overeating a dozen donuts, right? Am I forcing them to do the thing that they, that they have a problem with? Am I forcing someone who is tempted by something to do something? Do I have the power or does an ad have a power? Does anybody else have power to make somebody do something that they don't want to do? I have no power over anybody but myself. Well, maybe my children. (laughs) But no one can make you do anything that you don't want to do. Just as the devil couldn't make Jesus turn bread stones to bread or jump off the pinnacle of the, the temple or bow down and worship him. You know, I used to think that this passage was written incorrectly because that little word if, and I know I preached on this last year, that little word if also means since, right? In the Greek, A, A is the word there, not the letter A, but the the word is actually A, means if or since. And I always looked at this passage as being translated incorrectly, as if the devil was not, the devil is not questioning who Jesus is. The devil is not saying, if you are the son of God, then you can turn these stones into bread. The devil is saying, since you are the son of God, you can turn these stones into bread. You can end this hunger problem right now, dude. Take care of it. Right? The devil isn't questioning his identity. But I don't think it's written wrong. Because the devil is not questioning his identity. The devil doesn't question our identity. The devil knows exactly who Jesus is. Jesus is the son of God. And the devil knows exactly who we are. We are baptized children of God. What what the devil does and what these tempters try to do is to make us question our identity. The devil was trying to get Jesus to question his identity. To not put his trust in God. To not put his trust in the place that he knew it needed to be. 
to help him look someplace else. Right? To make him think that the power wasn't where it was at. When Jesus knew all along and Jesus didn't falter. So the thing I want us all to learn this morning is that God loves each and every one of us so much that he has sent his only son to suffer a death that none of us should ever have to suffer on a cross so that we would be secure in our identity so that no one would ever make us question who we are, wonder whether we're good enough or question whether or not God loves us. That, my friends, is where the power lies. Because if you can let somebody convince you that something is going to make your life better, or that you're not worthy the way that you are, or that God can't possibly love you as you you come, that's where they have the power over you. Because God loves you just as you are. And he loves you enough not to leave you that way. He loves you enough to refine you as a, as a refiner, refined silver, making it perfect in the fire. And he will do that for you. So I want you to remember that you are God's beloved child. Baptized, named, and claimed as his one and only. Loved by him regardless of where you've been or what you've done. And that is all you need to know. Rely in that power. Look not to what somebody else is telling you, but that that God loves you and has made you and claimed you to be his servant, his hands and feet in this world, to show forth his love to everyone. Remember that and hold to that and know that that can overcome any temptation you could ever possibly face.